are you? My name is Brian Mallow, and I'm not a doctor, but uh, I play one in the broken dreams of my parents. <laughs> Thanks for laughing. Technically, that was not a joke. <laughs> I opened up to you, and you laughed at me. <laughs> so, how many people, has anyone here seen me before? Huh? Oh, okay. Well, okay, so up front, you might hear a few things you've heard before, but for the most part, I'm going to sort of focus on things that we heard today. I've been here, how many, have you been here all day, like I am? Yeah. <laughs> And, so, and most of the seats are still full, so I guess we're doing well. So, um, I'm, I'm always a little conscious of my posture when I'm uh, standing up in front of a bunch of people looking at me. And I think it's because when I was a kid, my mom used to always tell me to stand up straight. Did you ever get that from your mom? Stand up straight. Yeah. Such a typical mom thing to say. I think mothers have been telling their kids to stand up straight for longer than we realize. Perhaps even to pre-human days. <laughs> what if that were the driving force <laughs> behind the evolutionary trend to walk erect? Mothers nagging their children up the evolutionary ladder. Right? Stand up straight. Don't drag your knuckles when you walk. <laughs> what, are you born in a tree? Do you want the other families to think we're not evolving? <laughs> no. you know, how many times do I have to tell you? That was always a good one, right? Yeah. That's the origin of mathematics right there. <laughs> they say apes are our closest cousins, but we never have them over. Not cool. <laughs> Not cool. I, now, I know I, all of you like to read science for fun, don't you? It's great to be in a group like this, like-minded people. And uh, I'm almost embarrassed to say that I only finally started reading a book that is now 150 years old, a classic, Charles Darwin's Origin of Species. Has anyone here read it? Yes, of course. Don't tell me how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it doesn't end, and that's the point. And we'll talk about that a little more. I mean, evolution, you know, well, why not right now, since I already brought it up? Evolu it's, you know, evolution is not this thing that happened a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. It's happening right now in this room. <laughs> Look around. Some of us are going to be a part of the future, and some not in that way. <laughs> right? And, um... God, I, sometimes I think that just the fact that so many people in this country still don't believe in evolution might be the strongest evidence that we really aren't evolving. <laughs> or at least it's an indication of what a slow process it is. <laughs> and, uh, and anyway, you know, I, was, uh, I really enjoyed Jeannie Scott's talk this morning but, uh, uh, on science and skepticism, but I still haven't seen her speak live on her other, you know, big subject, which is creationism. Uh, and, and evolution and, and education in our schools. And I think like a lot of you, I'm kind of a hardliner in that, frankly, I don't even want creationism taught in church. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, and, you know, I'm sure we all, I, I'd love to believe that there's a supreme being, you know, or a, maybe just a deluxe being. <laughs> maybe a being with extra cheese. <laughs> that then there's a God looking over me, and that there's that, that there's uh, you know an afterlife. But you know if it sounds too good to be true, <laughs> that's how I feel. But uh, a theme that's come up throughout the day—it's actually it was a theme of Brian Dunning's presentation um, that I think is kind of interesting, and I, I want to touch on. Um, and I want to make my way towards it. It came up in, in Dr. Kiki's uh, interactive uh, uh, session a little while ago. But uh, what is it? Like, we all like science. And, 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 and if you like science, it's hard to even comprehend why more people do. How can you be a biological creature that evolved on this planet and not be interested in science? And people think science is scary. And they think it's hard. A lot of people think it's hard and irrelevant. How can it be irrelevant to you when you evolved here and it's in absolutely everything. Anything you like, there's a science aspect to it, and we know that. And it's so fundamentally human. It's so basic. How can you peer out of those tiny holes in your skull <laughs> with anything but curiosity, which is all science is. It's just the quest to satisfy our curiosity and uh, answer very basic questions, you know, like who are we, where are we going, how much will it cost? Basic questions. <laughs> will I be expected to tip? Fundamental <laughs> questions. And I was always a curious kid, uh, at least that's what the neighbors said. <laughs> um, 
I remember once when I was about 10 years old, I asked my dad, why is the sky blue? Pretty reasonable question for a little 10-year-old scientist. My dad said, go ask your mother. <laughs> so I thought, cool, she knows. So I go off in search of my mom, and I really felt like I was experiencing the scientific method. You know, like I was following in the footsteps of Newton and Galileo, and when I find my mom, I go, Mom, why is the sky blue? And I'll never forget her answer, because I said so. <laughs> At first I was in awe of my mom, later I learned not to trust her in matters of science. <laughs> that was the authority position of our, that, that Jeannie talked about earlier, about where we get our knowledge. And the thing about science, it is, it, it's, it's, it's scary to people, and the thing that's scary about it is that it has this nasty tendency to keep revealing horrible, ugly truths about the human condition, you know, about the universe, about reality, mortality, death. Science has killed off our gods, canceled divine plans, stolen heaven, and it leaves us with what? Nothing. A vacuum, right? Instead of um, God's will, we have quantum probability and random chance. And instead of eternity, we have this terribly brief firefly existence. And as far as the universe goes, we are temps. We are here for a limited time only. And when I mentioned Brian Dunn's thing, it's like, so, okay, within that, what do you do with that? That's terribly depressing. And of course, people want to deny that. They don't want to accept that at all. You don't want to know. I mean, we, we have knowledge of our own, humans have knowledge of our own mortality. We know we're going to die. And I didn't mean that as a spoiler. <laughs> you knew that, right? You all knew, right? You didn't think you were immune. No. That's why it's always kind of funny to me when people act surprised when someone dies, right? They're like, you hear so-and-so die. Oh my God, I don't believe it. Really? It happens 100% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> it always happens. You, and then only, oh, if only he hadn't gone to work that day. If only, you know, if only he hadn't ridden the bus. If only he hadn't been 142. <laughs> <laughs> why him? That's the other good one. Why him? Because everyone. <laughs> no one gets out of here alive. But, but that's a lot to carry around. You cannot think about that all the time. So you have to suppress it with anything you got. <laughs> Drugs, alcohol, uh, careers, hobbies, meaningless sex. I didn't mean to single anyone out. <laughs> I'm sure it seems very meaningful to you. But it's just Mother Nature wanting to be a grandmother. <laughs> So yeah, so we have, you don't have to use anything you have, jokes, whatever you have to keep that reality at bay. Because otherwise, it would be pretty hard to function in life if that was in the forefront of your mind all the time. So, and, and the other end, we, we might be unique on this planet, you know, with that, with full knowledge of that situation. And do the other animals even realize how good they have it? I mean, dogs, no wonder dogs are so happy they're lucky. They have no idea death lurks around every corner. <laughs> chihuahuas are kind of scared. I think they might know something. <laughs> I think chihuahuas know something, because what are they so scared of? You know? A big cat. <laughs> I guess life is pretty scary when just about anything can step on you. But yeah, so, but, but, okay, so the, the, the thing that, that Brian said that was interesting, he's like, okay, so what do you do if you're going to take all that away? Of course, it's, it's so much easier and people want to instead believe the positive stuff, even if it requires a lot of denial. So the other side of it, though, is, and I know you all realize it, is that, that the picture